Monacot Leiden, Wikipedia Audio An economically important Monacot Monacotyledons, commonly referred to as monocots, are flowering plants whose seeds typically contain only one embryonic leaf, or cotyledon. They constitute one of the major groups into which the flowering plants have traditionally been divided, the rest of the flowering plants having two cotyledons and therefore classified as dicotyledons, or dicots. However, molecular phylogenetic research has shown that while the monocots form a monophyletic group or clade, the dicots do not. Monocots have almost always been recognized as a group, but with various taxonomic ranks and under several different names. The APG3 system of 2009 recognizes a clade called monocots but does not assign it to a taxonomic rank. The monocots include about 60,000 species. The largest family in this group by number of species are the orchids, with more than 20,000 species. About half as many species belong to the true grasses, which are economically the most important family of monocots. In agriculture the majority of the biomass produced comes from monocots. These include not only major grains, but also forage grasses, sugar cane, and the bamboos. Other economically important monocot crops include various palms, bananas, and plantains, gingers and their relatives, turmeric and cardamom, asparagus, pineapple, water chestnut, and leeks, onion and garlic. Many houseplants are monocot epiphytes. Additionally most of the horticultural bulbs, plants cultivated for their blooms, such as lilies, daffodils, irises, amaryllis, cannas, bluebells, and tulips, are monocots. Description The monocots or monocotyledons have, as the name implies, a single cotyledon, or embryonic leaf, in their seeds. Historically, this feature was used to contrast the monocots with the dicotyledons or dicots which typically have two cotyledons, however modern research has shown that the dicots are not a natural group, and the term can only be used to indicate all angiosperms that are not monocots and is used in that respect here. From a diagnostic point of view the number of cotyledons is neither a particularly useful characteristic, nor is it completely reliable. The single cotyledon is only one of a number of modifications of the body plan of the ancestral monocotyledons, whose adaptive advantages are poorly understood, but may have been related to adaption to aquatic habitats, prior to radiation to terrestrial habitats. Nevertheless, monocots are sufficiently distinctive that there has rarely been disagreement as to membership of this group, despite considerable diversity in terms of external morphology. However, morphological features that reliably characterize major clades are rare. Thus monocots are distinguishable from other angiosperms both in terms of their uniformity and diversity. On the one hand the organization of the shoots, leaf structure and floral configuration are more uniform than in the remaining angiosperms, yet within these constraints a wealth of diversity exists, indicating a high degree of evolutionary success. Monocot diversity includes perennial geophytes such as ornamental flowers including, tulips and lilies, rosette and succulent epiphytes, mycoheterotrophs, all in the lilioid monocots, major cereal grains in the grass family and forage grasses as well as woody tree-like palm trees, bamboo, reeds and bromeliads, bananas and ginger in the cumlinid monocots, as well as both emergent and aeroids, as well as floating or submerged aquatic plants such as seagrass. Class Monocotyledoniae in the Dacondal system and the Angler system, 
class monocotyledons in the Bentham and Hooker system and the Wettstein system, class monocotyledon in the Eichler system, class Liliati then Liliocyta in the Tactogen system and the Cronquist system, subclass Liliati in the Dahlgren system and the Thorn system. The most important distinction is their growth pattern, lacking a lateral meristem that allows for continual growth in diameter with height, and therefore this characteristic is a basic limitation in shoot construction. Although largely herbaceous, some arboraceous monocots reach great height, length, and mass. The latter include agaves, palms, pandans, and bamboos. This creates challenges in water transport that monocots deal with in various ways. Some, such as species of yucca, develop anomalous secondary growth, while palm trees utilize an anomalous primary growth form described as establishment growth. The axis undergoes primary thickening, that progresses from internode to internode, resulting in a typical inverted conical shape of the basal primary axis. The limited conductivity also contributes to limited branching of the stems. Despite these limitations a wide variety of adaptive growth forms has resulted from epiphytic orchids and bromeliads to submarine alizimatals and mycotrophic berminiaceae and triuridaceae. Other forms of adaptation include the climbing vines of Araceae which use negative phototropism to locate host trees, while some palms such as Calamus manan produce the longest shoots in the plant kingdom, up to 185 m long. Other monocots, particularly poles, have adopted a therophyte life form. The cotyledon the primordial angiosperm leaf consists of a proximal leaf base or hypophyll and a distal hyperphyll. In moncots the hypophyll tends to be the dominant part in contrast to other angiosperms. From these, considerable diversity arises. Mature monocot leaves are generally narrow and linear, forming a sheathing around the stem at its base, although there are many exceptions. Leaf venation is of the striate type, mainly arcuate striate or longitudinally striate, less often palmate striate or pinnate striate with the leaf veins emerging at the leaf base and then running together at the apices. There is usually only one leaf per node because the leaf base encompasses more than half the circumference. The evolution of this monocot characteristic has been attributed to developmental differences in early zonal differentiation rather than meristem activity. The lack of cambium in the primary root limits its ability to grow sufficiently to maintain the plant. This necessitates early development of roots derived from the shoot. In addition to roots, monocots develop runners and rhizomes which are creeping shoots. Runners serve vegetative propagation, have elongated internodes, run on or just below the surface of the soil and in most case bear scale leaves. Rhizomes frequently have an additional storage function and rhizome producing plants are considered geophytes. Other geophytes develop bulbs, a short axial body bearing leaves whose bases store food. Additional outer non-storage leaves may form a protective function. Other storage organs may be tubers or corms, swollen axes. Tubers may form at the end of underground runners and persist. Corms are short-lived vertical shoots with terminal inflorescences and shrivel once flowering has occurred. However, intermediate forms may occur such as in Crocosmia. Some monocots may also produce shoots that grow directly down into the soil, these are geophilus shoots that help overcome the limited trunk stability of large woody monocots. In nearly all cases the perigon consists of two alternating trimerous whorls of tepals, being homochlamydias, without differentiation between calyx and corolla. In zoophilus taxa, 
both whorls are choral line. Anthesis is usually fugacious. Some of the more persistent paragons demonstrate thermonastic opening and closing. About two-thirds of monocots are zoophilous, predominantly by insects. These plants need to advertise to pollinators and do so by way of phanaranthus flowers. Such optical signaling is usually a function of the tepal whorls but may also be provided by semaphils. However, some monocot plants may have aphananthus flowers and still be pollinated by animals. In these the plants rely either on chemical attraction or other structures such as colored bracts fulfill the role of optical attraction. In some phanaranthus plants such structures may reinforce floral structures. The production of fragrances for olfactory signaling are common in monocots. The perigon also functions as a landing platform for pollinating insects. The embryo consists of a single cotyledon, usually with two vascular bundles. The traditionally listed differences between monocots and dicots are as follows. This is a broad sketch only, not invariably applicable, as there are a number of exceptions. The differences indicated are more true for monocots versus eudicots. A number of these differences are not unique to the monocots, and while still useful no one single feature, will infallibly identify a plant as a monocot. For example, trimerous flowers and monosulcate pollen are also found in magnoliads, of which exclusively adventitious roots are found in some of the piperaceae. Similarly, at least one of these traits, parallel leaf veins, is far from universal among the monocots. Monocots with broad leaves and reticulate leaf veins, typical of dicots, are found in a wide variety of monocot families, for example, Trillium, Smilax, and Pogonia, and the Dioscoreals. Potamogeton are one of several monocots with tetramerous flowers. Other plants exhibit a mixture of characteristics. Nymphiaceae have reticulate veins, a single cotyledon, adventitious roots and a monocot-like vascular bundle. These examples reflect their shared ancestry. Nevertheless, this list of traits is a generally valid set of contrasts, especially when contrasting monocots with eudicots rather than non-monocot flowering plants in general. General Monocot apomorphies include herbaceous habit, leaves with parallel venation and sheathed base, embryo with a single cotyledon, a tactosteel steel, numerous adventitious roots, sympodial growth, and trimerous flowers that are pentacyclic with three sepals, three petals, two whorls of three stamens each and three carpels. In contrast monosculate pollen is considered an ancestral trait probably plesiomorphic. The distinctive features of the monocots have contributed to the relative taxonomic stability of the group. Douglas E. Soltis and others identify 13 synopomorphies. Monocots have a distinctive arrangement of vascular tissue known as an atactosteal in which the vascular tissue is scattered rather than arranged in concentric rings. Kalenchyma is absent in monocot stems, roots and leaves. Many monocots are herbaceous and do not have the ability to increase the width of a stem via the same kind of vascular cambium found in non-monocot woody plants. However, some monocots do have secondary growth, and because it does not arise from a single vascular cambium producing xylem inwards and phloem outwards, it is termed anomalous secondary growth. Examples of large monocots which either exhibit secondary growth, or can reach large sizes without it, are palms, screw pines, bananas, yucca, aloe, dracaena, and cordyline.
the monocots form one of five major lineages of mesangiosperms, which in themselves form 99.95% of all angiosperms. The monocots and the eudicots, are the largest and most diversified angiosperm radiations accounting for 22.8% and 74.2% of all angiosperm species respectively. Of these, the grass family is the most economically important, which together with the orchids Orchidaceae account for half of the species diversity, accounting for 34% and 17% of all monocots respectively and are among the largest families of angiosperms. They are also among the dominant members of many plant communities. The monocots are one of the major divisions of the flowering plants or angiosperms. They have been recognized as a natural group since the 16th century when Loblius, searching for a characteristic to group plants by, decided on leaf form and their venation. He observed that the majority had broad leaves with net-like venation, but a smaller group were grass-like plants with long straight parallel veins. In doing so he distinguished between the dicotyledons, and the latter monocotyledon group, although he had no formal names for the two groups. Formal description dates from John Ray S. studies of seed structure in the 17th century. Ray, who is often considered the first botanical systematist, observed the dichotomy of cotyledon structure in his examination of seeds. He reported his findings in a paper read to the Royal Society on December 17, 1674, entitled A Discourse on the Seeds of Plants. Vegetative Reproductive The greatest number of plants that come of seed spring at first out of the earth with two leaves which being for the most part of a different figure from the succeeding leaves are by our gardeners not improperly called the seed leaves, in the first kind the seed leaves are nothing but the two lobes of the seed having their plain sides clapped together like the two halves of a walnut and therefore are of the just figure of the seed slit in sunder flatwise, of seeds that spring out of the earth. With leaves like the succeeding and no seed leaves I have observed two sorts. 1. Such as are congenerous to the first kind precedent that is whose pulp is divided into two lobes and a radical, two. Such which neither spring out of the ground with seed leaves nor have their pulp divided into lobes. Comparison with dicots. Apomorphies. Synopomorphies. Vascular system. Taxonomy. Since this paper appeared a year before the publication of Malpighi S. Anatome Plantarum, Ray has the priority. At the time, Ray did not fully realize the importance of his discovery but progressively developed this over successive publications. And since these were in Latin, seed leaves became folia seminalia and then cotyledon, following Malpighi. Malpighi and Ray were familiar with each other's work, and Malpighi in describing the same structures had introduced the term cotyledon, which Ray adopted in his subsequent writing. Mens quoque me, alias seminals plantulas fabarum, and phasiolarum, ablatus parator binis seminalibus folius, seu cotyledonibus, incubandus posui, in the month of May, also, I incubated two seed plants, Faba and Phaseolus, after removing the two seed leaves, or cotyledons. In this experiment, Malpighi also showed that the cotyledons were critical to the development of the plant, proof that Ray required for his theory. In his Methodus Plantarum Nova Ray also developed and justified the natural or pre-evolutionary approach to classification, based on characteristics selected a posteriori in order to group together taxa that have the greatest number of shared characteristics. This approach, 
also referred to as polythetic would last till evolutionary theory enabled Eichler to develop the philetic system that superseded it in the late 19th century, based on an understanding of the acquisition of characteristics. He also made the crucial observation XHAC seminum divisione summum potest generalis plantarum distinctio, ec mio judicio omnium prima et lunge optima, in EAS science qui plantula seminally sunt bifolia aut delta iota lambda beta omega, et qui plantula sem adulta analoga, that is between monocots and dicots. He illustrated this with by quoting from Malpighi and including reproductions of Malpighi's drawings of cotyledons. Initially Ray did not develop a classification of flowering plants based on a division by the number of cotyledons, but developed his ideas over successive publications, coining the terms monocotyledons and dicotyledons in 1703, in the revised version of his Methodus as a primary method for dividing them, Herbie Florifery, Davidi Passant, U.T. Diximus, in monocotyledons and dicotyledons. Early History Although Linnaeus did not utilize Ray's discovery, basing his own classification solely on floral reproductive morphology, the term was used shortly after his classification appeared by Scopoli and who is credited for its introduction. Every taxonomist since then, starting with de Jussieu and de Condal, has used Ray's distinction as a major classification characteristic. In de Jussieu's system, he followed Ray, arranging his monocotyledons into three classes based on stamen position and placing them between acotyledons and dicotyledons. De Condal's system which was to predominate thinking through much of the 19th century used a similar general arrangement, with two subgroups of his monocotyledons. Lindley followed de Condal in using the terms monocotyledon and endogeny interchangeably. They considered the monocotyledons to be a group of vascular plants whose vascular bundles were thought to arise from within. Monocotyledons remained in a similar position as a major division of the flowering plants throughout the 19th century, with minor variations. George Bentham and Hooker used monocotyledons, as would Wettstein, while August Eichler used mononocotyle and Engler following de Condal, Monocotyledonii. In the 20th century, some authors used alternative names such as Bessie s. alternifolii and Cronquist s. liliati. Later Cronquist changed liliati to liliocyta, usages also adopted by Tactogen simultaneously. Thorne and Dahlgren also used liliati as a synonym. Taxonomists had considerable latitude in naming this group, as the monocotyledons were a group above the rank of family. Article 16 of the ICBN allows either a descriptive name or a name formed from the name of an included family. In summary they have been variously named, as follows. Over the 1980s, a more general review of the classification of angiosperms was undertaken. The 1990s saw considerable progress in plant phylogenetics and cladistic theory, initially based on RBCL gene sequencing and cladistic analysis, enabling a phylogenetic tree to be constructed for the flowering plants. The establishment of major nuclates necessitated a departure from the older but widely used classifications such as Cronquist and Thorne, based largely on morphology rather than genetic data. These developments complicated discussions on plant evolution and necessitated a major taxonomic restructuring. This DNA-based molecular phylogenetic research confirmed on the one hand that the monocots remained as a well-defined monophyletic group or clade, in contrast to the other historical divisions of the flowering plants, which had to be substantially reorganized. 
No longer could the angiosperms be simply divided into monocotyledons and dicotyledons but it was apparent that the monocotyledons were but one of a relatively large number of defined groups within the angiosperms. Correlation with morphological criteria showed that the defining feature was not cotyledon number but the separation of angiosperms into two major pollen types, uniaperturate and triaperturate, with the monocots situated within the uniaperturate groups. The formal taxonomic ranking of monoctyledons thus became replaced with monocots as an informal clade. This is the name that has been most commonly used since the publication of the Angiosperm Phylogeny Group System in 1998 and regularly updated since. Within the angiosperms, there are two major grades, a small early branching basal grade, the basal angiosperms with three lineages and a larger late branching grade, the core angiosperms with five lineages, as shown in the cladogram. Prelinean Amberellides Nymphiales Postlinean Ostrobaleales Magnoliids Modern Era Subdivision Evolution Chloranthills Monocots Ceratophilides Eudicots While the monocotyledons have remained extremely stable in their outer borders as a well-defined and coherent monophylactic group, the deeper internal relationships have undergone considerable flux with many competing classification systems over time. Historically, Bentham, considered the monocots to consist of four alliances, epigeny, coronary, nudiflori, and glumales, based on floral characteristics. He describes the attempts to subdivide the group since the days of Lindley as largely unsuccessful. Like most subsequent classification systems it failed to distinguish between two major orders, Liliales and Asparagales, now recognized as quite separate. A major advance in this respect was the work of Rolf Dahlgren, which would form the basis of the angiosperm phylogeny group S subsequent modern classification of monocot families. Dahlgren who used the alternate name Liliidae considered the monocots as a subclass of angiosperms characterized by a single cotyledon and the presence of triangular protein bodies in the sieve tube plastids. He divided the monocots into seven superorders, Elismatiflori, Ariflori, Triuridiflori, Liliiflori, Zingiberiflori, Cumlaniflori, and Arisiflori. With respect to the specific issue regarding liliales and asparagales, Dahlgren followed Huber in adopting a splitter approach, in contrast to the long-standing tendency to view Liliaceae as a very broad sensolato family. Following Dahlgren's untimely death in 1987, his work was continued by his widow, Gertrude Dahlgren who published a revised version of the classification in 1989. In this scheme the suffix flori was replaced with oni and the number of superorders expanded to ten with the addition of bromeliani, cyclanthani, and pandanani. Molecular studies have both confirmed the monophily of the monocots and helped elucidate relationships within this group. The APG system does not assign the monocots to a taxonomic rank, instead recognizing a monocots clade. However, there has remained some uncertainty regarding the exact relationships between the major lineages, with a number of competing models. The APG system establishes 11 orders of monocots. These form three grades the alizomatid monocots, lilioid monocots, and the cumlinid monocots by order of branching, from early to late. In the following cladogram numbers indicate crown group divergence times in Maya. Acorales Alizomatals 
heterosavials. Diosco Reels 115. Panned Anals 91. Lily Ales 121. Asparagales 120. Aracles. Poles. Zingiber Ales. Cumlinales. Of some 70,000 species, by far the largest number are found in two families, the orchids and grasses. The orchids contain about 25,000 species and the grasses about 11,000. Other well-known groups within the poles order include the Cyperaceae and Juncaceae, and the monocots also include familiar families such as the palms and lilies. In pre-phyletic classification systems monocots were generally positioned between plants other than angiosperms and dicots, implying that monocots were more primitive. With the introduction of phyletic thinking in taxonomy the predominant theory of monocot origins was the Ranelline theory, particularly in the work of Bessie, which traced the origin of all flowering plants to a Ranelline type and reversed the sequence making dicots the more primitive group. The monocots form a monophyletic group arising early in the history of the flowering plants, but the fossil record is meager. The earliest fossils presumed to be monocot remains date from the early Cretaceous period. For a very long time, fossils of palm trees were believed to be the oldest monocots, first appearing 90 million years ago, but this estimate may not be entirely true. At least some putative monocot fossils have been found in strata as old as the eudicots. The oldest fossils that are unequivocally monocots are pollen from the late barmian aptian early Cretaceous period, about 120 to 110 million years ago, and are assignable to clade. Pothoidae monsterii eraceae, being eraceae, sister to other elizimetals. They have also found flower fossils of Triuridaceae in Upper Cretaceous rocks in New Jersey, becoming the oldest known sighting of saprophytic slash mycotrophic habits in angiosperm plants and among the oldest known fossils of monocotyledons. Topology of the angiosperm phylogenetic tree could infer that the monocots would be among the oldest lineages of angiosperms, which would support the theory that they are just as old as the eudicots. The pollen of the eudicots dates back 125 million years, so the lineage of monocots should be that old too. Kair Bremer Using RBCL sequences and the mean path length method for estimating divergence times, estimated the age of the monocot crown group as 134 million years. Similarly, Wickstrom ETAL, using Sanderson's nonparametric rate smoothing approach, obtained ages of 127-141 million years for the crown group of monocots. All these estimates have large error ranges, and Wickstrom ETAL used only a single calibration point, namely the split between Phagales and Cucurbit Ales, which was set to 84 Ma, in the late Santonian period. Early molecular clock studies using strict clock models had estimated the monocot crown age to 200 plus or minus 20 million years ago or 160 plus or minus 16 million years, while studies using relaxed clocks have obtained 135 to 131 million years or 133.8 to 124 million years. Bremer's estimate of 134 million years has been used as a secondary calibration point in other analyses. Some estimates place the emergence of the monocots as far back as 150 Maya in the Jurassic period. The age of the core group of so-called nuclear monocots or core monocots, which correspond to all orders except acorales and alizimatals, is about 131 million years to present, 
and crown group age is about 126 million years to the present. The subsequent branching in this part of the tree, including the crown Petrosaviaceae group may be in the period around 125-120 million years BC, and stem groups of all other orders, including Cumlinidae would have diverged about or shortly after 115 million years. These and many clades within these orders may have originated in southern Gondwana, i.e. Antarctica, Australasia, and southern South America. The aquatic monocots of Aelizimetals have commonly been regarded as primitive. They have also been considered to have the most primitive foliage, which were cross-linked as Dioscoreals and Melanthiales. Keep in mind that the most primitive monocot is not necessarily the sister of everyone else. This is because the ancestral or primitive characters are inferred by means of the reconstruction of character states, with the help of the phylogenetic tree. So primitive characters of monocots may be present in some derived groups. On the other hand, the basal taxa may exhibit many morphological autopomorphies. So although Acaraceae is the sister group to the remaining monocotyledons, the result does not imply that Acaraceae is the most primitive monocot in terms of its character states. In fact, Acaraceae is highly derived in many morphological characters, and that is precisely why Acaraceae and Aelizimetals occupied relatively derived positions in the trees produced by Chase Etal and others. Some authors support the idea of an aquatic phase as the origin of monocots. The phylogenetic position of Aelizimetals, which occupy a relationship with the rest except the Acaraceae, do not rule out the idea because it could be the most primitive monocots but not the most basal. The atactosteal stem, the long and linear leaves, the absence of secondary growth, roots in groups instead of a single root branching, including sympodial use, are consistent with a water source. However, while monocots were sisters of the aquatic ceratophilies, or their origin is related to the adoption of some form of aquatic habit, it would not help much to the understanding of how it evolved to develop their distinctive anatomical features, the monocots seem so different from the rest of angiosperms and it's difficult to relate their morphology, anatomy, and development and those of broad-leaved angiosperms. In the past, Taxa which had petiolate leaves with reticulate venation were considered primitive within the monocots, because of its superficial resemblance to the leaves of dicotyledons. Recent work suggests that these taxa are sparse in the phylogenetic tree of monocots, such as fleshy fruited taxa, the two features would be adapted to conditions that evolved together regardless. Among the taxa involved were smilax, Trillium, Dioscorea, etc. A number of these plants are vines that tend to live in shaded habitats for at least part of their lives, and may also have a relationship with their shapeless stomata. Reticulate venation seems to have appeared at least 26 times in monocots, in fleshy fruits 21 times, and the two characteristics, though different, showed strong signs of a tendency to be good or bad in tandem, a phenomenon described as concerted convergence. The name monocotyledons is derived from the traditional botanical name monocotyledons or monocotyledonii in Latin, which refers to the fact that most members of this group have one cotyledon, or embryonic leaf, in their seeds. Some monocots, such as grasses, have hypogeal emergence, where the mesocotyl elongates and pushes the coleoptyl toward the soil surface. Since elongation occurs above the cotyledon, it is left in place in the soil where it was planted. Many dicots have epigeal emergence, in which the hypocotyl elongates and becomes arched in the soil. 
As the hypocotyl continues to elongate, it pulls the cotyledons upward, above the soil surface. The IUCN Red List describes four species as extinct, four as extinct in the wild, 626 as possibly extinct, 423 as critically endangered, 632 endangered, 621 vulnerable, and 269 near threatened of 4,492 whose status is known. Monocots are among the most important plants, economically and culturally and account for most of the staple foods of the world, such as cereal grains and starchy root crops, palms, orchids and lilies, building materials, and many medicines. Of the monocots, the grasses are of enormous economic importance as a source of animal and human food and form the largest component of agricultural species in terms of biomass produced. Molecular Clock Estimates Core Group Aquatic Monocots Other Taxa Etymology Ecology Emergence Conservation Uses Notes Bibliography Books Historical Modern Symposia Chapters Articles Phylogenetics APG Websites and databases